Right in the middle of the CBD, opposite to Forest Place, lies the biggest station on the Transperth network, serving all the lines. It's Perth, although that name is actually the shortest. The first station originally opened on the 1st of March 1881 as part of the Eastern Railway from Fremantle to Guildford, although at this point it only had one through platform and one terminating platform. Fifteen years later, in 1894, a much larger station was opened at the location and it has been expanded many times since. Up until 1976, the station served as the headquarters for the operation of the railways in Western Australia, with many administrative offices being located in the building like the ones directly above us right now. We have just crossed across the dedicated pedestrian traffic light from Forest Place, past the many ticket machines in phone booths into this small central area. Here there is an info center as well as a few shops and an ad value machine. Right after this there is a staffed area with multiple open and closed smart rider buses. As soon as you pass through the processors you are straight out on platform 5 which is the one for trains to Armadale. Up this escalator you can get up to the bridge to get to the other platforms. But first, let's go and look at the semi-secret platform, which is platform 4, for trains to Thornby, and all the stations in between Claysbrook and Cannington, which the Armadale line trains don't stop at. Platform 4 is actually located just to the east of platform 5, with the Thorny trains coming right along parallel to the tracks for the Armadale line, but it's actually a little bay platform, which is further down here, underneath the covered section of the station, so for first timers it can be a bit hard to find. And over there on the right is platform 3, which is the one for the Australian train to Bunbury, only used a couple of times a day. So right here, this is the buffer for the Thorny platform, you can see this is a great place to take a photo of the front of the train. And then you turn around and over there you see all the other platforms down here. This is platform 5 right here. Up the escalator now, or you can take the stairs of the lift as well. You come straight up to these open, I mean closed stations, water processors, on this footbridge up here. No, I don't know if you could call it a footbridge, it's quite large, but just an overpass across the tracks. There's a little kiosk here and a few other shops on the other side of the processors. And then on the left hand side you can take the escalators down to all of the other platforms. This used to be the only way that you could cross between the Perth station platforms until they opened the underpass on the other side with the subway, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so here we are now at the end on the platform 8-9 island. There's this little area here which just ends because of the glass. So you can take a look down onto the barely used platform 9. And then come down the escalator. This pair for this platform is actually like, uh, what, what do you call it? Parallel to each other. No, not per opposite or parallel, perpendicular or whatever. They're not at right angles, just that one's going down while the other one's going up when they're facing each other. But all the others are not like that. So then you come down and this is the covered section. You can see platform 9 is not in use, but platform 8 is for Midland trains. Um, yeah, that's it over here. The platform arrangement at the moment is platforms 8 and 9 for Midland line services, although platform 9 is just for special event trains and when the Fremantle line is closed most of, the th well, most of the time. Platform 7 is for Fremantle line services and platform 6 is also for special event express services to the press stadium, but is also sometimes used for Armitage line services. Platform 5 is the main Armadale Line platform, and then the Bay Platform 4 is for Thorny Line services, and the Bay Platform 3 is for Australian services. Platform 1 and 2 are in the underground part of the station, which is quite a few hundred meters away, and that's for Drinlop and Mandra Line trains, but I'll actually film that in a separate video. Now these arrangements have changed many, many times over the years due to things like the Perth City Link project, which sunk the Fremantle line into a tunnel under Yegan Square, 
the opening of the thorny line, the opening of the underground part, and just general permanent platform changes. There's a Wikipedia page which actually lists all the previous um, ways that the platforms were arranged for each line, which I'll link in the description below. So here we are now on the western end of the platform 89 island. You can take another set of escalators or a lift straight down to the subway or underpass or whatever you want to call it that goes over to Perth Underground Station or just between the other platforms at Perth. Although someone just called that lift down so I'm just going to take the stairs real quick. Down we go. And here we are now at the bottom. Oh wait a minute, you can't see anything because my camera completely changed focus since I went into a new lit um, new brightness of the environment. Let me just fix that. There we go. So this is the underpass. I know the camera's still a bit bad because in bad light this camera is just terrible, nor this phone. Here's the, the, the screen displays for platform 8. For some reason there's like a map of the line and they actually show where defibrillators are, although this is very outdated because I think every station got the mandate to have defibrillators now. It used to only be at these specific ones, but... Okay, anyway... Let's check the rest of this underpass. Here we have the Platform 7 sign, and then the Platform 6 sign. From Platform 6, there's actually a twice-a-day Armadale Line service during peak periods to increase the amount of trains on the Armadale Line. But that's actually the only timetable service from Platform 6. And then this is a perfect place for people to advertise, or companies to advertise. As thousands and thousands of commuters walk through here every single day. And then if you turn right over here, you can take this escalator on up towards Perth Busport. So for the Platform 5 area, there's actually two sets of escalators on either side. Here we are at the top now. There's actually a little toilet box here and a bin and some other stuff. This station has most of the facilities you would usually expect from it any bigger station on the network, I'm not going to state them all because it's just way too many. So you go right out of those classes and smart trader processors, you can go to straight to the Perth bus board, which has many bus connections as well as the train replacement bus that we're going to get there.
just a quick interruption. This train that has just pulled in here is the twice a day Armadale line service from Platform 6, which in the timetable is stated as a C sharp service or like C hashtag. You can see on the sign it says Platform 6, Armadale in 5 minutes, although here it doesn't have the hashtag, it says C. But for some reason it says 2 cars, even though that was clearly a B series train, which cannot be a 2 car service. Off goes the B series train now. You can see they are, the sign's actually fixed now. It, it did say two cars at the very end. And here's the other one coming in 15 minutes with a little message at the bottom saying that there's an earlier service from platform 5 if you want it. It's quite weird that this time of day you have the Thorny, Armadale, and Armadale hashtag services all in that little section of line at the same time.
back down in the underpass now. Here are the screen displays for every single line. Although I don't know how they're gonna change this when the airport and all the other lines open. Are they just gonna put airport services under Midland Line or put a new screen in or... Yeah, probably just under Midland Line for a while, but then once they open Ellenbrook and everything, it'll have to change. And then you walk down there and you go towards Perth Underground Station. But as I said, I'll do that in another video. And now we're already up here. This is the Horseshoe Bridge, the main connection for road vehicles between Northbridge and Perth. CBD. There's actually a Blue Cat stop up here, which is stop number 13. And the next one's in 12 minutes. Though I don't know why you'd get off up here, because you just have to walk down anyway. And you get a great view of the station from up here as well, just like I showed at the very end of my very popular C-Series mock-up video. And now this is Wellington Street, the one of the main roads in Perth. We're back at the pedestrian dedicated traffic light where I started the video. You can see there's a lot of buses here. You have like 60, 55, 40, 2, 41. Um, 950 all of those stopping here then you got all the other ones in the busport as well and this is the cat bus stop for press station 24 for red cat 25 for yellow cat and you've also got forest place stop which is on the other side of the road and you've also got bus 220 and 960 which go along here and then go down plain street okay so now let's go down to the australian train platform here you can see the list of stations which is which it stops at including Armadale, Pinjara, Brunswick Junction, and then Bunbury at the end, but then a lot of others in between as well, which it only stops at on the crest actually. Here we are back at the platform 3, looking straight at the front of the Australian now. Don't ask me why you're looking at a two car train right now, when before it was three car, let's just say that this was filmed months before all the other footage you just saw. A few little sneaky looks inside the train carriage when it's empty. And there you can see straight through the glass onto platform 4 with a Thorny Line train just leaving right now. This train service was originally introduced on the 24th of November 1947 and it takes two and a half hours to traverse the 167 kilometers to Bunbury train station twice a day. It currently uses these diesel units which are quite noisy and smelly and to get all that stink out of this undercover station there are actually these black vents on top of each of the exhausts from the train which take the air straight out into the street when it pulls into here these units are quite old now and are going to be replaced soon with trains similar to the c-series coming into transperth take a quick look at the facilities on platform 3 there are quite a lot of seats as people wait for the service to arrive and actually just one open station transfer smart rider processor. I have no idea why that would be needed. Maybe just for people like me. When I come into here, just so I like have allowance to come into this platform. But yeah, it's actually quite a short platform, only fits about four carriages, although the Austrian is never really that long. And then down here there's some like cleaning rooms and stuff. And a staircase right down onto the tracks so you can just walk down if you want to but that's obviously not allowed look back at the train over there and watch it depart in a moment some more red cats viewed from these windows out on wellington street and here's all the rubbish on the tracks don't know why it's so dirty here and then the other ones of Transperth are not. Here it goes. Turn on the lights in a moment. And the horn. And it's ready to go. Just gotta wait for that service to come in from the Armadale line because now it goes all the way express to Armadale station, which is pretty good. Imagine buying a ticket to get to Armadale using this train. That'd be funny. 
Well, only the rich people can do that. Oh, there we go. The signal is now green and the train can leave. And here is a bonus shot of it up from the Beatford Street Bridge, which is actually where Blue Cat Stop 4 is also located. Don't ask me why, it's three cars. <laughs> yes, it's actually the, a totally different day. There's no way I could run up to here in that amount of time to film it. Okay, now we're going to move into the second part of this video. This is, after all, this is the 250 subscriber special. So I'm going to try to find the last remaining old bus, as I call it, or the Mercedes-Benz 0405 NH, or just NH if you want, which um, they withdraw quite recently. Like, they had a lot of these buses throughout 2019 and 2020, and then they just sort of phased them out really quick, and they're all gone. Although, for the last few months, mm, there were actually two left operating as um, Perth CAD buses, which were the 1188 registration and the 1199 registration. Although, since then, they have now been withdrawn on the 30th of September this year, because this bit of the video, yeah, I filmed ages ago as well, so it's just a collection of different dates of filming. Um, so you can't go and find this yourself now, although maybe um, some of these old buses have been transferred to like party bus companies and they also still operate on Rottest Island if you want to get the experience of this bus. But this is just a video of how I found this last bus on the day that I filmed this and then did a nice five minute ride on it to respect its legacy for the last 20 or so a year. So, so far all you've seen me do is come out of the Perth Underground Station entrance, get on a 960 bus up to the Plain Street stop for the Yellow Cat and walk all the way up here to the Claysburg Depot, although I didn't film the walk. The Claysburg Bus Depot right here, which you saw, is completely empty except for like one or two buses, which means I just went here to check that the bus is in operation on this day and it looks like it is, so it's somewhere in the city, gotta go and find it, just walk past the Claysbrook train depot there. And now I am up on the Claysbrook station footbridge, which I've filmed quite a few times now, in the 100 subscriber special as well. And on an A-series train back towards Perth, to find the bus wherever it may be. zoom over to McIver station, but we don't have to see the rest of the way. We know what that looks like from the 100 subscriber special. We are now out on Wellington Street outside Perth again, at the bottom of the Horsham Bridge. Here's another old bus, some really old Renault buses. These are TP1029, or not TP, because that's a really old bus. Just the next transport bus. And now, I have walked all the way down William Street to get into this bus which is going to take me into Elizabeth Key bus station as I have high hopes of finding the old bus in here on either the blue or green cards. and sure enough there it was on the left hand side it was just really lucky that I found it this quick I could have spent even way more hours searching for it it could be anywhere so I had to quickly run when I saw this run across the entirety of Elizabeth Key bus station which I'll do a separate video on one day when I get to the bus stations. 
And down we go to the green cut stands. Here it is. It's a marvelous bus. Although this is 11.99, not 11.88, so it's slightly newer. I couldn't find 11.88 and I wasn't gonna spend even more time searching for it. It's basically exactly the same, so... Here we are, down, and it's already leaving, so that was just in time. First impressions of this is just... Mm, at this point I hadn't been on one of these for about five months, actually. The last time I was on it was in the northern suburbs on a 467 service. So, um, yeah, this was quite special to be on one of these again, especially with these rectangular seats, which are sort of like leaned back. I think some of the other NH buses, they're not like this type of seat. So you can take a look at them. They are quite dusty, of course, but not as bad as some of the seats on buses, on like the newer buses, which start with 21 as the registration, like the Volgren Optimus buses, because those seats are really thick with lots of foam, so the dust and sweat goes right in and makes the whole bus stink as well. <laughs> I don't know if those are actually going to last 20 or even more years like these ones did. So up we go now. You can see everything, all the features of the bus, the grey window sills, the nails in the window sills, the square stop buttons, although those still exist on gas buses of course, the holes in the poles for better grip, that rhymes, although it, there's usually a lot of dirt in there, the lights, strips, with like the semicircular or quarter circular section, which just folds down with the like rectangle air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to describe all the special things about this place. And of course, the outside looks very different, with circular windows out the no windows, circular lights out the front, which makes them easily distinguishable. And at the back, there's actually a window which you can look straight out of, unlike on any of the newer Optimus or Future buses. Yeah, that's as much as I can say about it now. I have a nice view there of it passing away from the city, going away from the city. All these people in it right now don't realize what a special bus they just got on. One of their last opportunities to ever see a bus like this operating on the network. Imagine if we get them back once because of like... Yeah, I, I, you know, once on the Junilup line there was a disruption and they had to send train replacement buses out, and a few of these actually came, even though, like, some of the 12 series buses came, even though they had already been with them. So that was pretty good, but I didn't manage to go on one of them, so hopefully, we'll get a few more events like that if they don't repurpose them into other bus routes. And now we're already at the end of the route here at Leaderville. I'll just let you enjoy the sounds of this bus for a moment as its final remembering. By sounds, I of course meant the spectacularly loud engine, especially at the back of the bus, the nice ding of the bell, and the squeaky doors as they open and close. The doors are actually quite narrow in these buses. So stand up, and it's the last time I'll ever step on one of these buses. All this flowing through my head. Oh, another major like, uh, property feature of this bus is the rear-facing seats at the camera. The only buses you have rear facing seats on now are like the articulated ones. So here it is. It's of course going to do more trips. I wasn't on the very last trip, but just one of the last trips. This is Green Cat Stop 11, Leaderville Station, bus 1199. Which said bus, which had to be junk food, is the ad in it at the moment. But yes, bus 1199. Signing out for one of its last few weeks of service. We just gotta take a few pictures from it right here. Because Leaderville. Um, yeah, we, 
we, I just can't stop looking at it. Oh, there it is, the front. We're never gonna be on one of these again. And now I am back up on the Little Station footbridge, here where I have already filmed maybe in three videos. The Little Station video, the 100 subscriber special. Was there another one where I did it? I don't know. But yes, so you see all the cars leaving the city on another, on another average weekday. And the bus over there in its bay. For comparison, you've got the brand new Vulcan Optimus bus right behind it over there. Yeah, let's just have a nice 30 seconds of silence to remember this bus. And to all of you who are still here, thank you for watching this 30 minute subscriber special video. If you made it all the way to the end, be sure to comment when was the last time you remember being on an NH bus. And maybe if you know what registration it was. I am now at over 250 subscribers, already like 265 at the time I published this, around there. So thank you for all those subscribers, I've never really said this. And I always just have a little subscribe panel at the end. But if you do watch this, these videos and you enjoy them, please hit the subscribe button. I would love to grow up to maybe 1000 subscribers eventually. About 75% of my viewers are actually unsubscribed. But yeah, I'm not gonna pressure you though. Know? This is not one of those crazy, um, what's it called? Plugs for one's own channel. Just if you like it, then subscribe. So I'll see you in the next video. That was also our 50th station video now, so only 20 or so left to go. Bye.